Hey guys, welcome to the video vlog. I'm trying a new thing here where I got the one camera here and I got the GoPro here. One camera here, GoPro here. So today I'm going to answer a question that was put to me about architecture. Essentially they were asking about Studio Web. Uh, why is Studio Web using Code Igniter? Or is it, can it still, can you still use Code Igniter rather because it's growing? Uh, I'll give you a couple answers to this. First of all, Studio Web 1, 2, and 3, which are the older versions now, they were actually originally built seven, seven, eight years ago, something like that, with Code Igniter, because that was at that time the predominant framework, framework du jour. It was the, it was the, it was the PHP framework of the time. And when I produced, when we produced Studio Web, it was it wasn't called that, and it was purely an exploratory type of thing. I got one of my designers, I got a junior designer. I said, let's just put this together. I gave him the spec, and it was something, just an experiment. So we put it out there for the general public to see, and bing, bing, boom, Bob's your uncle. I started getting people approaching me in terms of schools. Uh, so as a result of that, working with schools over years, we kept adding and adding and adding and changing the application. That's a common thing when you are building an app from scratch. You have to uh, uh, be aware of the fact that chances are, very likely, that the version 1 of your app is not going to be 100% on point with regards to what your app needs to do. That's just a uh, that's just a given. So when you write your first version of an app, you get it out as quickly as possible. Anyway, so we kept building and building off of that original code base, and at some point, CodeIgniter was having difficulty handling handling the volume. That's for sure. So to extend it, first we started going in there, refactoring code, ch op optimizing methods, making them better. Uh, optimizing the database access, making them better. But at one point, uh, because of the the original architecture was not conceived of uh, in a way that uh, matched what was actually happening down the road. So basically, we built it for this, and it turned out we needed that. This again, common. So what did we do? Well, I made the decision at that point to use a microservices design pattern. I've spoken about this before. So what I did to extend the life of the original code base, which was CodeIgniter base, what I did was we created a whole new app using Laravel, which is a far more modern framework, had a far more modern ORM. So we used Laravel to extend the lifespan. So we created a new app. We created a new app with Laravel and uh, in so doing, creating this new app with Laravel, we were uh, able to extend the lifespan of the original app, the CodeNighter app. So what actually happened is that we created the new app with Laravel, and we used Laravel to access the data in the old CodeNighter app, and then the Laravel app would process this data in a way that we needed, and then it would return this data back to the original app in the form of JSON objects. And we created a, a microservices type of architecture. So the old app, the old CodeIgniter app, would basically consume processed data from the new, better, faster Laravel-based app. But this only took us so far as well. So about a year or so ago, I decided it was time to uh, retire the original app because the code base was just too old. It had been worked on by several people, so it was kind of messy to begin with. And we decided, I decided I was going to do rewrite from scratch. So what I did is I, I got a new lead developer, and I have him, had him work on the old app for about, about six months or so, patching things, doing the, just tying up the loose ends of the old app. So he got familiar with the use case and what, how, where the bottlenecks were and how the thing had to work. And then with that, we started architecting. We built out the new Laravel-based system from scratch. So because the new system, Studio Web 4, which I've been deploying new students to for the last month or so, and um, it's designed from scratch using Laravel and its more advanced ORM. And the whole thing has been optimized based on an intimate knowledge of the use case, meaning we know exactly how the app has to work. 
we now know what the bottlenecks were in the previous version. So we were able to design from the database upwards uh, a far more efficient architecture to handle uh, the traffic and the data concerns uh, that we're going to have. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So I'm excited about it because it took, uh, whatever, 10, 11 months to build out. And now that it's built, um, we're now uh, building more architectures around. So for example, the killer video store where people buy uh, the freelancer course and the my full stack course, that was designed, I don't know, 10 years ago, that, that, that store architecture. It's, it has all kinds of, it's a full shopping cart, supports multiple payment gateways, support of three at one point, uh, has a, a pretty pretty good couponing system, and it was uh, based on a time when we did digital downloads and even DVD and CD copies. That's, the, that's how old that code base is. And uh, so now what we're doing with the Studio Web 4 platform built out, and it's super clean and fast, with the new store that we're building now is an extension of the new Studio Web 4 platform. And the new store will basically broker... Uh, the creation of account of accounts of of accounts into the into the studio web app so everything is being uh, centralized around this new studio web 4 platform that we built up in just in the last year so to answer your question yes studio web 3 does use code igniter would i use code igniter today no i would not if you're doing php development you 100 percent i would suggest you go to laravel that's the most popular as a huge community the code is very well maintained. It's 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 uh, it's it's just a good, very well thought out platform. It's uh, very good stuff, and uh, so yes, I still have Studio Web three active, and that's being actually hosted on DigitalOcean, but I'm going to be retiring that from active use. I think in August, this coming August, 20, August 2019. Uh, it's just that I still have a lot of people on Studio Web three, so I'm just letting people finish finish up their courses there and then I'm going to move over to uh, then then I'm going to shut down Studio Web 3 and move everybody to Studio Web 4. When you transition from one app to another when you do a major change you have to have a timeline of a year or so to give you know to work out everything and to just give people a chance to on off to onboard into the new system off of the the old system. So there you go yeah we do have an old Studio Web 3 is based on Code Igniter, but Studio Web 3 is actually a combination of Code Igniter and Laravel. The Laravel support app is delivering, again, is through a microservices framework. It's a uh, uh, design pattern, rather. It's, uh, well, it's a framework. It's delivering uh, all kinds of process data to the old system, which just wasn't able to keep up with the volume. And there you have it, code in a car. Uh, this is a new, uh, new style. i got two cameras going. I'm not sure what you guys are going to think about that. I just thought it'd be interesting to see how it goes. So just in case you guys are nerds who want to know, I'm using a GoPro 7 here. And here I'm using my Canon uh, mirrorless camera. And uh, it's looking pretty good to me. So uh, there you have it. Uh, yeah.